Once upon a time, a young boy was digging a ginormous hole on the beach. But then, disaster struck! The hole caved in, and he found himself stuck up to his neck in the sand like a human popsicle. Thankfully, his parents were able to keep the sand out of his mouth. Emergency services swooped into the beach soon after. After some effort, the boy was taken out. Experts say sand is tricky and can be super unstable when messed with. So, the moral of the story is, go ahead and have fun on the beach. But if you're planning on digging a hole big enough to fit your entire body, be mindful of the size and location. It turns out that this is not a one-time incident. Making deep holes can lead to serious injuries, or even worse. According to a study, there have been over 50 incidents of sand hole collapses worldwide, with many of them resulting in fatalities. We don't want to be the next headline for a preventable tragedy. So, here are some helpful tips from experts to keep you safe and sound. Never dig a hole deeper than the knee level of the smallest person in your group, and always fill in any hole you make before you leave, day or night. Lastly, avoid digging near the dune line or water line where emergency vehicles travel. Since we started with holes on the beach, we might as well continue with sinkholes. Sinkholes, also known as snake holes or swallow holes, are like chameleons on Earth's surface. They can be big, they can be small, and they can pop up seemingly out of nowhere. It's like playing a game of whack-a-mole, but instead of moles, it's sinkholes. These sneaky things form over the years. They require specific conditions and processes. So what's the deal with sinkholes? Well, they're basically natural depressions or holes in Earth's surface caused by karst processes. And what are karst processes, you may ask? They occur when bedrocks are soluble. It's as if rocks have a secret weakness, and water is their kryptonite. Now, even though sinkholes form slowly, they're like that one friend who's always full of surprises. They can be unpredictable and show up when you least expect them. Interesting fact time! This giant pit is over 2,165 feet deep. It's the biggest and deepest sinkhole in the world. Some researchers think a meteorite might have caused it, but others believe it formed over the course of 128,000 years as underground rivers eroded the surrounding limestone. Either way, it's pretty mind-boggling. The locals have known about it for ages, but it wasn't until 1994 that the rest of the world learned about it thanks to a group of British explorers. This massive hole is home to over 1,200 plant and animal species, including rare ones like the ginkgo tree and the clouded leopard. A waterfall cascades into the pit in the rainy season, feeding an underground river and cave system below. It's like a whole other world out there. Next, we have hailstorms. Think of them as nature's way of saying, heads up, in the most intense way possible. Hail is like frozen rain on steroids, and when it starts pelting down, you better take cover. Hailstorms typically last for about 15 minutes, but in that short time, they can cause serious damage to buildings, cars, and crops. They can even knock out power lines and bring down trees. And if you're unlucky to be caught out in the open during a hailstorm, you might find yourself feeling like a human pinball. Here are some of the things that make hailstorms a real bummer. Watch out, planes. If you think turbulence is bad, wait until you encounter a hailstorm in the air. A plane crashed during a hailstorm in northern Mexico in 2018. Thankfully, everyone on board made it out safely. Phew! Hail is not just a danger to airplanes, but also to cars on the road. Imagine driving down the highway and then boom, your windshield shatters into tiny pieces. You can barely see where you're going and the road is slippery. Farmers have it rough during a hailstorm too. Those strong winds and giant ice pellets can destroy crops, leaving behind a trail of broken plants and stripped bark. All that hard work goes down the drain in a matter of minutes, leading to significant losses. What if it's summertime? 
Who doesn't love soaking up the sun, playing in the sand, and catching some waves? Oops, rip currents. Those powerful, narrow channels of fast-moving water are everywhere along the east, gulf, and west coasts, and the Great Lakes shores. They can move at speeds of up to 8 feet per second. People who panic in rip currents often try to swim straight back to shore, which is the wrong move and could tire you out, or even worse. So, what should you do if you get caught in a rip current? First, stay calm and don't fight it. Instead, swim parallel to the shore and then back to land at an angle. A little clarification. Rip currents and rip tides are not the same thing. Rip tides are a specific type of current that happens when tidal water moves quickly through places like inlets and harbors. Landslides are another type of danger that can catch you off guard. Mountains look like they're stable, rock-solid things that have been around forever. But don't let appearances fool you. Landslides can happen anywhere, at any time. Basically, landslides happen when a big pile of dirt, rocks, and other debris gets all shaken up and starts tumbling down a hill. Sometimes it's because of rain. Sometimes it's because of something like an earthquake. And sometimes it's just because the ground decides it's had enough. Mother Nature's got some more tricks up her sleeve. First up, we've got heat bursts. This weather phenomenon is hotter than a jalapeno. Now, these aren't your everyday thunderstorms. For a heat burst to occur, the atmospheric conditions have to be very specific. We need dry air, high altitude descents, and an absence of evaporated precipitation. When all these factors come together, the result is a heat burst that can reach speeds so fast that you'll feel like you're riding a rocket to the sun. And not only is the air scorching hot, but it's also so dry that it evaporates moisture right out of anything it touches, including poor defenseless vegetation. Have you ever heard of a fire whirl? Also known as a fire devil or fire tornado? It's like a swirling vortex of fire and ash that can eat up debris and combustible gases. Think of it as a mini tornado that's fueled by a raging fire. These things usually start with a swirl of wind, which you can see thanks to all the smoke. They happen when rising heat and windy conditions team up to create whirling eddies of air. These eddies can sometimes get so intense that they form a tornado-like vortex that's hungry for anything and everything in its path. Now, sometimes people call a fire whirl by its other names, like fire nado, fire swirl, or fire twister. But those terms usually refer to a different thing, where a fire is so intense that it creates an actual tornado. Fire whirls are a little different because their vortex doesn't usually go from the ground all the way up to the clouds. And even if they do, they're not usually considered a classic tornado because they don't form in the same way. These things can get pretty hot, too. We're talking up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Fire whirls are more likely to happen during wildfires or firestorms when there's enough wind to create big vortices. The biggest ones can be massive. They can even uproot trees that are 49 feet tall or more. There you have seven sneaky natural phenomena. Have you ever encountered any of these? Comment below and let us know. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.